it up already dude yeah <laughs> what a great way to start the podcast alex espinoza over here messing up the start i know of our technical stuff. difficulties human Ooh. error human error <laughs> this guy over here professional journalist my i'm just kidding oh not at all <laughs> uh, <we're, laughs> uh what's up everybody welcome back um we are recording this on wednesday july 14th um nba finals just ended which is cool um <laughs> And uh, like we said, we have two special guests um, with us today. We're doing kind of a cross pod. Uh, megapod. A yeah, megapod. 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 <laughs> we got, we got your three powers po- combined. <laughs> 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 we got three A's podcasts going on here. Uh, first off, we got Jason Burke, of course, of Locked On A's podcast, member of the Locked On Podcast Network. Um, his Twitter handle is Locked On A's, at Locked On A's, or at by Jason B. Thanks for fucking joining us jason we really appreciate it man i am so happy to be here because you guys are always fantastic and you know promoting my stuff and i try to do the same for you guys and we, we got another guy you haven't met well i mean you kind of mentioned him you haven't like introduced him <laughs> yet so this is just uh very exciting i love talking about the a so i'm thrilled to be here thanks for having me you guys absolutely and on that note we also have alex Bess- espinoza uh the uh writer of the ricky henderson of blogs also the oh, ricky yeah. henderson of podcast his twitter is at ricky blog Thank yeah, you, thank, Alex, for joining us. Thank you, you guys. Uh, started off our, our uh, segment just perfectly. Just yeah, what's the, uh, sorry, dude. <laughs> sorry, I'm messing, messing it all up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> no, and but now, thank you guys. This is fun, dude. I'm, I'm looking forward to this, man. No, this is going to be fun, dude. No, man, that's what dude. we do yeah. here. We have fun. We joke yeah. around. That's what our pod's about. Absolutely. And now the Ricky Henderson of YouTube, right? Absolutely. A couple yeah. weeks ago, I started up there. I mean, all the kids are on YouTube now, so you got you to gotta be on <laughs> YouTube, you know? You got to stick I, up. I, so I learned it pretty quickly because like uh, when we initially started out, I would post our stuff on the A subreddit yeah. and someone's like, hey, you know what? Could you actually post it on YouTube? Because it's actually way easier. And I've noticed for me personally, I find it easier what doing it on YouTube working from home right now because yeah. it's yeah. like with podcasts, I'm always like in my car or whatever. I'm like, no, I'm like I'm just chilling and want to throw something on YouTube. So it adds another element. Yeah, it's, it's fun, the future, dude. man. Yeah. Yeah. It's the future. I'm trying to do some John Boy breakdowns. You know, it's fun. <laughs> dude. I get my there John Boy on. You know, it's fun, dude. Yeah. It's so like me and Julio are big fans of the Lebertard show. And like they started doing their stuff on YouTube. I just have it on the background like while I'm working all day. It's fucking great. Like, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I get it. Like, yeah, I don't know. Um. So uh, let should we should we jump into it, fellas? Um, we're we're gonna start off icebreaker. You ready? You're about to head into the Coliseum. Mm-hmm. What do you? Where's your 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 ticket just got scanned? You got uh, the try to giveaway or whatever it is going to be in the next month. Where's your first stop? Alex, uh, you go first. All right. Well, I I guess it kind of depends on like how early I like I don't know how much time we're like is the game already happening? You got, were, like, we, okay, were we okay. tailgating <laughs> in the parking lot or is it early? Need like some if, context, folks. If, okay, if I, I got, some got time. twenty minutes until first pitch, <laughs> I'm gonna get a beer. I'm gonna go get a beer. Right. I'm gonna get the clearest the closest beer stand to my uh to my seat. I'll probably go get a brewski or two ski. There we go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right, Jason. I am uh, probably going straight to my seat because I'm running behind and I want to see all of the pitches. I am a bad baseball fan. I like going and just watching the game. I don't like having, you know, maybe I'll grab a soda at some point or something, but I'm just sitting there to watch the game, cheer for the team. Uh, I'm not there for, you know, like going to Oracle Park where it's get as drunk as possible. Not my thing. I, I want to <laughs> watch the baseball game. That's because it's all those tech nerds who don't are baseball say no, fans just Oracle trying to look Park for something is, to do I'm on going Wednesday to get my. Night. Yeah, I got, I'm getting my first Patagonia and getting my Allbirds <laughs> on, and we're going to go. But That's what's uh, in their team's door. Wait, question, Jason, are you one of the guys that are are you a, a keep score while you watch type of guy or score keeper? I have done it before, but I usually get distracted for at least half an inning and then everything yeah. just ruins. So I'm like, all right, well, that didn't happen. Yeah. If I'm by <laughs> myself, yes, but usually if I'm like with my wife or something, I'm like we're here to be together and, you know, enjoy the baseball game together. Yeah. So I, I usually don't, if I'm with anybody, it blows my mind. Cause to this day, I still like, I'll go to ballparks around the country and there's still like so many people, like old people, older people, no offense, older people, 
Uh, I'm not saying you're an old. Who are you calling old, old, dude? Who are you calling old, dude? I wasn't older, taking older, offense. Older, <laughs> well, I don't want. I don't want it to be like this is like an old person hobby, but like older people and they they have like what used to be like the you know headphones with like oh the, with the, the little metal radio. thing but over their head. Like, yeah. Now yeah. it's like AirPods. And those little fuzzy, those fuzzy headphones. Yeah. yeah. But now they're like they're revolutionizing like technology. These old people. I'm just kidding. Um, and they have like AirPods in and they're listening to it on the radio and they have their iPad out and they're doing they're keeping score on their iPad. It's like still still people do it and it's just I like just, i don't know it's so fucking cool i just pictured just old you say that old people are doing it just these old people with their airpods pro with like their like nmds on Dude, and like, just like the old I've, people I've just drip out it. of nowhere i've seen it like i'm just saying no it happens it's a thing. okay now what game was that at was that in oakland or was that la or like uh in the angel going to angels games they're always they're the boys you nailed, nines. you nailed it uh, that in particular it was an angels game it was a okay, guy go. up in like the third deck <laughs> sitting right behind home plate <laughs> just doing his thing yeah i appreciate oh, those people i appreciate well, those people you know they're listening to the radio making sure like oh that was an e4 that was not a e that was on the e6 <laughs> that was an e4 that was a fast ball not a not a wild pitch, but that was a pass ball, you know? Exactly. Stuff like that, you know? I will I say those people out to my wife for years. I'm like, that's me when we get older. I'm doing that, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> I will say the cool feature about, because like, since we're in both in LA, um, we use MLB TV to watch the games. Hearing the radio broadcast over actual video has been awesome. Yeah, because I like as much, as much as I love like Kuiper and Fossey and Braden, like, it's a little more thorough on radio side because they kind of have to do a little more then you get to listen this. to like, Kenny Korak. Yeah, yeah, I get dude. it. I love Korak, dude. Korak's my favorite. I, I love all the broadcasters, but but Korak's my favorite, dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, awesome. there's something so like therapeutic about hearing Korak. Mm. Um. So <laughs> let's let's uh let's start off with or let's uh let's jump into another question because uh and just get to know you guys a little bit more. Um. So what made you want to get into A's coverage, uh, Jason? Let's start with you. Uh, you know, obviously you wanted to do a podcast, but like what 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 is it about um, one doing a podcast and one and two doing it uh, about the A's? I'd been blogging about the A's starting in like 2013 or so. And, you know, grew up an A's fan, love baseball. And yeah, so obviously I want to do it. Uh, anything regarding the A's, I want to be there providing my voice for it, <laughs> but I could talk about any team if you wanted me to. Uh, it's just trying to get into the industry. So trying to get a little bit, you know, broader strokes. But for this particular gig, I was actually reached out to by some people that I had worked out, uh, worked with before. And they're like, hey, you want to host this podcast? I was like, sure. I've never done that before. Let's get into it. <laughs> and, uh, so the, if you listen to like the first 50 or so episodes, it is me just getting my legs under me and be like, I, yeah, I'm learning how to edit now. And then once I found out how I how to edit the podcast, I think that that's when I started getting a little bit more confidence. And now I'll just write down some notes. I'm like, all right, I'm going to talk for half an hour. Let's go mm -hmm. and do that, you know, five days a week. And it's been a lot of fun, but it's you know, I, I love talking about the A's talking about baseball in general. And uh, sometimes it's hard for me as just enjoying baseball in general to keep it to just the A's for locked on A's because yeah. I'm like yeah I want to talk about that Fernando Tatis catch or you know whatever else happened but um, do they do know. they not let you talk about like national I mean, news that much? I probably could I'm mean, national news yes do it. if it's something do it. bigger <laughs> but uh if it's you know like uh, other stuff I'm like yeah I, I want to stay true to the brand of yeah. being locked on A's so it's more of a my choice than a you know any declaration that they've given me yeah uh, but that's kind of where I am I might start instituting like a major league Mondays or something like that, where for the third segment, I'm talking about whatever the hell I want to. And it's just baseball related. And I thought that that would be fun, but yeah, it's just being an A's fan and thinking that I have a, di a different kind of a voice that's in general media. Cause you get, you know, a lot of the people from the chronic uh, and Susan Slusser being gone has opened up opportunities for all of us, I think, because yeah. now it's like, all right, well now there's a lot more room to grow and create your own niche. And that's, and I love Susan, but oh man, there is so much more oxygen in the room right, right now. And I think that that's kind of fun. Which is kind of cool yeah. for, for A's fans. They get a variety of, of that stuff and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, Alex, it's, what take about your you? your pick, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just got tapped into like the whole podcast scene within the past year. And dude, there's so many A's podcasts out there. It's really cool. I, I really <laughs> like it. You know, it's awesome, dude. This is your COVID hobby? Yeah. I, yeah, basically, that's how I was like, well, I got a lot of time on my hands. Might as well start a today's podcast. Um, but no, I, I mean, yeah, like like Jason, yeah, I grew up rooting for the A's. Uh, you know, I grew up in the East Bay. 
um I, I was in alameda till i was six and i just remember going to like coliseum games when i was super young and just thinking like th- this is like the most i don't know it just like struck me in a way that nothing else did um and then i, I became like super obsessed when i was probably like 13 like um like when the big three came up so i was born in 87 and the big three came up in like 2000 and i was like oh, prime yeah. time for me to get obsessed you know hooked. that's me and julio's team too yeah yeah yeah, yeah 2000 <laughs> i mean that was the team i mean I, I followed them you know all that whole time but then like i really became like super obsessed in that time um and then in 2010 i was jane lee's intern for mlb.com like you know every summer they do an internship program uh i was the a's intern and oh, wait, wait, since- wait 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 what summer yeah. Uh, 2010, 2010. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, it was Jane. It was I, I was Jane. 2013. Oh no, shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Summer 2013. I I was an intern there. I was yeah. a, I was a uh a, a news intern though. Oh okay, yeah, Wait, right on. Anyway, yeah. Sorry, I keep I, going. No, yeah. So no, it's it was fun. That's how I got my foot in the door, and that's like a that was a really sick opportunity. You got to you know go to the locker rooms and like yeah. talk to these people. You know, like it was hella fun. Uh, you know, I've just kind of been freelancing ever since. Yeah. So um. And then last year I started Ricky Henderson of blogs, Ricky Henderson podcast. Uh, but yeah, I worked for like MLB.com, The Athletic, um, and then NBC Sports Bay Area till a couple months ago. Yeah. So what what made you want to name it the Ricky Henderson of blogs? I've always wondered this. Uh, I just well, started as like kind of a joke. Like I thought it was kind of stupid and funny. It was like the greatest, you know. It's like what's like <laughs> the, the greatest most of the like, yeah, of all it's time. Like, like, like the okay, the Ricky's like like to me, Ricky is the greatest player of all time. So I was like, oh. It's it's not the Ricky Henderson. It's not Ricky Henderson's podcast. It's the Ricky Henderson of podcasts. You yeah. Know? So <laughs> it's like now, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> have you heard? Because I know you you know you got the connections throughout the the org now. Have you heard like Ricky say something about it yet? No, actually, I I need to. I, I'm at the point now where I kind of want to reach out to him and be like, yo, it's <laughs> just like it's okay. Like it is it's gonna get like I don't know. If I ever have that conversation, I think it's a good thing. You know, that means Ricky's like, lawyer is gonna be coming after you, Alex. That, I, if that ever happens, that'd be, I already have a we backup plan. don't know plan. what podcast is. I'm gonna call um, the I'm gonna call the Terrence Long a podcast if he. Uh, <laughs> if he uh, yeah. I was gonna say maybe you can, maybe you can ask your boy Cavill to hook you up. But I don't know after that pressing him with that last question. I don't, I don't know if he would help you. Oh like, no, he's I'm cool. Just I'm just yeah, kidding. he's cool. He's he's used to it. You know, he's a politician. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be great if you had like a press pass that had the Ricky Henderson of blogs on it, oh, and you went up to Ricky Henderson and were like, like "Hey, dude, check where it are out. you from?" And he's like, "This is where I'm from." <laughs> I'm just hey, using hey, your Ricky, name, I'm, image, I'm, and likeness. You know. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. It's like the NCAA thing, but Ricky, you know. Hey, Ricky, can I ask you a quick question? Alex, Alex Espinosa, Ricky Anderson of blogs. He'll just be like, he's like, what? 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 what did you just say? You're you're doing like the Wayne World Two thing with the press pass. Yeah, like that was the Wayne's World One. Yeah. <laughs> Or the so, A's would be like, well, it's funny because the, the, the A's know the name of my podcast at this point yeah. and they haven't said anything. So I'm like, oh, all right, I'm just going to, you know, uh, it's better to beg for forgiveness and ask for permission or whatever to say. Yeah. Something like yeah. That, you know, so whatever. 100%. It's, it's <laughs> kind of funny because like you said, like this was kind of a quarantine hobby for you. It was the same yeah. thing with us. So yeah. Chris has a uh, Chris has had a, his own podcast. Shout out to the Magic Hour. Uh, how long have you had running for? Like what, two, three years? I started I know, in 2018. Kind of, yeah yeah and that's just I was, a general sports podcast i just i would just talk my friends ears off on sports and just make my own podcast but yeah. and i would so like chris and i we've known each other for 25 years his brother and i were like in kindergarten together in antioch so like that's kind of origin so like uh-huh. i would be on a show all the time and i'd always bug him like dude we should do an a's pod we should like i think it'd be great i think it's good to be space. focused you know it's, yeah. it's like it, yeah. it, there's so many things out there it's like you kind of have to be focused i think yeah. you know so uh-huh. like you know covid hit we were stuck at home and then when baseball came back i'm like dude sure. like, this is it like this is the yeah. time we should do it and it's fun you know, dude it's, it's awesome fun. i love it's, it it's like a fun yeah it's a fun hobby honestly I it's a it. wednesday night yeah. tradition you know it's a tradition <laughs> unlike any other um but like i think one thing talking about with like kind of going to the coliseum and now everybody's kind of covering the team i think the one thing that's kind of weighed on the both of us is the stadium situation and like it fucking sucks to be honest like there's the first few weeks it was so hard to watch the games because it was like it was just lingering in your head so like how did everybody kind of feel about that you know um uh, Chris, I kind of want to get your two cents kind of from your perspective. I don't think we have too much to talk we about. Just went like... from, we just went from high to just low, just so fast. <laughs> this, dude, this is, stealing... I, I don't think it's a dire situation. This I think is, it's okay. I think this it's okay. is the A24 right. of pods, you know, like uncut gems. It's like, hey, good, no, no, we're going to, we're going to 
dig a little <laughs> deeper. We're going to make this a little sh- sad a little bit or pessimistic, you know? I mean, I think that everybody who listens to this podcast knows how I feel about it. And it's tough because it's always on your mind. It's always brought up. It's, someone always tweets about it while you're watching the game. And I'm not going to lie. I look on Twitter when I watch the game. It's hard not to because you want to like kind of see the reaction. So like that, it's just, it, it's hard to get out of your head, to be honest with you. That's just, yeah, yeah. that's my opinion. Uh, yeah, no, but, it stinks. Yeah. Jason, I, I've been going up and down. I've been riding that wave. Yeah, the first time or when they first announced uh, Vegas and all the stuff, I was like, I mean, it feels like a ploy. And then they went to Vegas and there was the Cavill tweet from the Golden Knights game. And I was like, OK, yeah. this is the low point. And then, you know, getting back up and down, it's right now I'm feeling OK. I, I feel like there's some a chance, at least, as opposed to it being completely shut the door and all that stuff. Um, there, there are people smarter than me covering this stuff. So I, I try to get what I can and understand what I can. But uh, it, it's really hard to get who's telling the truth and what's actually happening because it feels like everybody's lying in the media. So I, I, no <laughs> I think the worst part about it too is as ACE fans, we're naturally pessimistic. Mm-hmm. We're pessimistic about every single thing that comes in our way. And I think just as Bay Area sports yeah. fans, you know, Alex, you got your Warriors shirt on. Everyone's like, oh, the Warriors is nice. I'm like, no, you know how much shit we had to deal with with the Warriors for all those years <laughs> yeah. for them to get good. So like, I think that's just kind of our natural state. That's how we are as as, as a fandom yeah for sure yeah i, I don't know i mean i i think uh i don't think it says i i think they're all ultimately going to come to a solution I, I think the a's are doing all this posturing with vegas because they actually do want to make a, a deal with oakland happen i think it's just way more lucrative for them in the long run like uh you know fisher stands to make more money if they develop something on the waterfront in oakland where all this money is as opposed to going to vegas and just building some you know some some stadium, some indoor stadium on some in- dusty intersection in Vegas. I-, I think it just makes more sense for them. Um, I-, I think Casey Pratt tweeted today that they're about five hundred million dollars away from each other. Yeah, which which I think concerning. is that I I don't know when, when it comes to a twelve billion dollar negotiation. I think they they can figure this out, especially if the county gets involved uh, to help with the funding. Um, I think I I don't know. I I am cautiously optimistic. Obviously, like a lot a lot can happen. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's kind of it's funny sometimes when you watch the baseball game, you're like, oh, yeah, this is a uh, this is actually what it's supposed to be. But you should only be worried about this. You shouldn't even be worried about the stadium, you know, but uh, that's life as an A's fan. You know, I was, <laughs> I was watching around the horn earlier and like one of the last segments, uh, it was like A's I'm like, oh, OK, let's do their talk about. And of course, the stadium. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh, Vegas, like, oh, God. the Las Vegas A's. Yeah, it's like, oh, God. It's, and, and the weird thing is like, it sounds I haven't done like a ton of research, but it sounds like Vegas as like a community, like, no, because all this stuff is coming about how they're already paying way too much for the Raiders stadium. And they're like, no, we don't want to get in this all over again. Yeah. From what it sounds like. <laughs> look so at like- the Raiders. The Raiders are just burning everybody, dude. <laughs> I think my thing from why would the A's want to move to Vegas? And I know that that, that sounds stupid, but uh, I'll elaborate here. Um, they'd be the third team in a very short span, just being added to this market. So they're already not the, the premier attraction. I think that, there would be a lot of uh, casino owners that are like, no, we don't want a baseball team here because that's way more dates that are taking away from our profits. So I think that there would be more opposition in that regard. Maybe they go to Portland or something else and there's other options that they could explore, but it sounded like Vegas has been the boogeyman. And also the thing with Vegas, I think is that it is more of a commuter. Pl- you, you go there to, to visit. You don't, There's not a ton of people that live there that are going to be like, yes, I want this team and I don't already have a baseball team that I root for, you know, so it'd be a very strange place to build a baseball ballpark because everybody already has their connections to their other teams. They've moved from other places to Vegas with their affiliations already intact. Why would they? choose the Oakland A's at that or the Las Vegas A's at that point? It doesn't make sense. I think that it makes a lot more sense to be rooted in Oakland. Ha. (laughs) <laughs> and, and and that's the that's the luxury that 
the Raiders have where you can like if the Pat- Patriots come to town, you have like that income because, you know, it's just one game, one game a year that you can come into Vegas and like your boys from Boston can be like, let's go do a Vegas trip. And, you know, like you still have that and you have that. And also they have the luxury of Los Angeles being four hours away. So the, they still have that fame base. The A's don't have that. And the A's play how many games a, a year? You're not going to get that that type of fanfare, at least from from the opposing crowd. Uh, it's going to be even tougher for Oakland fans to to travel all the way down there. But I will say that I've been to a Golden Knights Sharks game before and the Golden Knights fans, they really do rally around the team. They love it. But like you said, to your point, Jason, that was the first team. There was just some kind of connection to that. Well, and that was the first team and they were an expansion team. So they, yeah. and they were good too, right? And that. they were yeah. like really and good they, too, yeah, right? Was, like yeah, they were right. like really good. <laughs> well, also straight up, I don't, I don't mean to, to shit on hockey, um, the southern western region could give two shits less about hockey, the grand scale, like compared to you know north like the northeast and Canada and just the northern regions. Nobody like you know I I I'm, I'm a Sharks fan, but like not really. Like I'm a very casual Sharks when fan they're good. Like, I, yeah, I watch. Them yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. If they're in the playoffs. If they're yeah, in the playoffs, yeah. I watch them. Yeah. And like yeah, because think about being it. Being a Sharks we, and an A's fan is just terrible. I've watched them. <laughs> crush. In the playoffs, so many times I can only do that for one team, and I chose. Dude, the there's A's, a lot so. of crossover. When I was working for NBC doing their social, there's like a lot of the same fans who I would see on the like interacting with uh, Sharks content and the A's content. It's like yeah. very, it's a, it's a big crossover there but for sure. Think about it. it. Like we all are are in the East Bay. Like how many? Like I've been to one Sharks game my whole life because it was a pain in the ass to get to San Jose from Antioch. <laughs> Whereas if I wanted to go to Oakland, you know, as a teenager cool like my parents can drop me off a bar with friends we can go to the game like you can't do that with sharks game it's just harder and like what's up in southern california it's the same thing people care about like i feel like there's more kings fans but like the ducks people don't care about the ducks unless they're doing good and they've been good for the last you know 10 15 years but well, julio nevada is not southern california so like let's <laughs> let's yeah but even that alone think about right phoenix there. phoenix the coyotes the same thing they've talked about relocating multiple times Phoenix is not Nevada, but all right. Fair, fair, fair. No, but Um, I'm saying, yeah, but I was saying the Southern Western Hemisphere, that little (laughs) region. You're going to call that whole thing a hemisphere? I was going to (laughs) say hemisphere is pretty. (laughs) Um, I'm I'm also a communications major, damn it. Let's, let's, okay. (laughs) Touche. Uh, (laughs) Let's transition into some, uh, some more like baseball type of uh, like the, you know, team talk. So, um, this has been on my mind recently, so I kind of wrote this question um, because the A's have fallen pretty fast um, in the standings a little bit. Bob Melvin has never made it past the ALDS. Clearly no success in the playoffs in general. What what is it? What do you guys think it is about his management style? And is it his management style that makes him not able to win um, in the postseason? Maybe. Yeah. I, I think that here are my two thoughts. And I don't know if it's uh, one you can't really prove. So I have no idea. And then the other one is the maybe. Uh, the maybe comes from like in last year's playoffs, it was, uh, you know, the, the starter comes out, use Mero Petit comes in, and that is the game plan each and every time. And, you know, the race had success with it, but it was Nick Anderson who's a much different pitcher than use yeah. Mero Petit. And it feels like the, the Astros had figured out Petit, but he was still continually continually going to him and it felt like you got to switch it up at some point and have a different plan of attack but at the other the other side of the coin is the amount of options that he has aren't you know limitless it's not like he has the raise bullpen to work with where it's like i can throw whoever i want to out there they're going to get these outs and i think like watching the giants in you know uh, 10 12 and 14 they never had the best team in baseball, but a lot like the Astros, they would reach that other level in the playoffs. And I think that that could be something that has been hindering the A's of late. It's just they don't have that next gear that they kick it into necessarily uh, the last few years where it's like, we're in the playoffs, let's go kick some ass. And that that's something that I think that he can't really do. He doesn't create the roster, but I think that with the bullpen is the thing that he would have the most control over. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Like I, I was, I, I saw this question. I, I went back and just kind of looked at like 
all the elimination games and just how they kind of got there. It was like, you know, 12 and 13 Verlander game five. It's like, shut them out, destroyed them. That's PTSD right uh, there. With that I know. <laughs> well, and then 14 was probably the, probably the worst loss out of all of them, you know, the, the Kansas city loss. But I also think Melvin probably had the most to do with that one. Um, you know, he could have maybe taken Lester out a little bit earlier. Um, but then 18 was like the opener. That's when that whole thing and that kind of blew up. Like Hendricks gave up an early dinger to judge, and it's like, you know, whatever. Um, in 19, I think you put that on Manaya, and then 20, and yeah, maybe he maybe he could have managed the bullpen a little different. So I, I think when you look at Bob Melvin, I think the two critiques are, you know, it's 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 his matchup thing. Like he's a matchup guy, you know, he's mm-hmm. all about um like, yeah, he is. A, he, he's not like Kevin Cash, like to that degree, but it, there's like some middle ground between like an old school manager and a analytics guy. And maybe, yeah, he it, his his bullpen matchups. He just is relying on that. Um, but also, you know, hindsight's 2020, um, you know. Um, so I, I think if there is critique of him, it's probably his bullpen management. But in general, like and also I, I just think the A's are kind of just built the way they're built is they're good for 162. Like that lineup over the course of a, a season, we'll probably figure it out. But like, I don't know. It just doesn't, it's not the same when it's like Judge, you know, Stanton, um, you know, you know all, all the Yankees. And then like, you know, Altuve, Correa, Springer. And then it's like, you know, Jed Lowry, Matt Olson, Matt Chapman. Like, yeah, like those guys are good, but there's not the same teeth, you know? It's like, oh, those guys could all go 0 for 4. And it's like not a big surprise, you know? So I, I just don't know if they're built, especially their lineup is built for the playoffs um, ultimately. But if you're talking about Melvin, I think it comes down to his bullpen management. Um, if that's like the one critique, you know? Yeah. I, I, for the record, I don't, uh, I don't feel this way, but it has crossed my sure, mind. Sure, Chris, you're, you're the one who wrote the question, dude. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, mean, Chris. We, I just wanted to, I wanted somebody to else hear, is here to shit on my mind. Let's do it so long. long. <laughs> no, but, I wanted to hear some No, but, but there is a, there is, this, there is, there is the an anti Bob Melvin season, chorus. There always is a small is, anti. At the end, yeah. at the end yeah. of every yeah. season, they're, that they rally hard. And it's just yeah. like, dude, I will say he's made two major mistakes in two big games. One, I will, I will, I'll give him a break on 2018 because he had some shit luck with the Manaya injury. He probably should have been starting that game. Although you go the next year and he shit the bed, so maybe that's not a bad idea. <laughs> but um, and but 2014 is unexcusable. Like, okay, clearly they're stealing on us because this dude doesn't have a pickup, uh, pickoff move. And yeah. our our defensive they stole like catcher, seven bases that game or something. I think yeah. I did. It's like that's our, a lot. Yeah. And our <laughs> defensive catcher who can throw guys out gets hurt in the first inning so we have to go to Derek Barton who's not a good he's not a he's not a throw Derek guy. Barton? Derek Norris. Barton or Derek Norris, Norris. sorry. Derek <laughs> <laughs> Norris. Oh, like, we were God. all like we were all like what? <laughs> Maybe that's a Freudian slip of just of just never mind. I've already had um, enough PTSD here in Justin the minor Verlander. Right. Yeah. I don't want to hear Derek <laughs> Barton. No anyway. Derek Is there Norris any- who, who can't throw people out. So it's just like I mean I don't know. Yeah. But but I yeah. Anyway, so like, who right, was the guy that got injured in left field? Because was it Sam Fold or in center field in that game as well? They had two oh, big injuries right. that were defensive things, and I feel like because uh, it was Johnny was it Gomes and somebody else running in in left uh, left center ish, and know. that's when the the game winning run scored. And if whoever that was had not gotten hurt, you're like, I think that they make that catch, and then the Royals also maybe don't win that game. So there's yeah. a couple of really weird injuries where. Uh, even with the keeping Lester in, I feel like they still could have won that game, which is yeah. crazy. Yeah, I mean that's the thing is like Lester gave up was charged with four runs, but they ended up giving up five more runs after that. So it's yeah. kind of like it's I mean still, that game was just such yeah. a roller coaster. I mean when they went yeah. into extra innings, like oh we scored a home run, great. Oh god, okay, they scored two runs. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's, it's really funny reading all those names like Giovanni Soto and Alberto yeah. Cayaspo. Oh, that's, like, oh, oh no, classic man. Alberto Cayaspo. <laughs> Yeah. Is there anything with this? Uh, okay, let's say if no trades happen, if uh, we get guys back healthy, is there anything with this roster right now where you can be like, I could see things differently this year? I think the one no. thing I'm kind of a little, the only thing I'm a little optimistic about, and we've talked about this in the past, is like they, the guys that they had signed in the offseason have a ton of like World Series experience. Like even though Mitch Moreland's been kind of a wash right now. I think just having him around, having Romo around, it's kind of important for a lot of these guys who haven't been in those situations. But at the same time, it's like 
Romo's gotten better over the year, but like Mitch Moreland has not looked like the guy we thought he was Dude, going to be. Even though, too. Yeah, Elvis. Yeah, and El- Elvis series. the same way. Elvis yeah. has been awesome yeah, lately, sure. but yeah, He's World Series experience. Lately, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. One question: Where is Mitch Moreland? Do we know what happened to him yet? So yeah, have they? They haven't released his injury yet, right? It's just kind of like we don't even know if it's of... an injury. We don't even know if it's an injury. Like, yeah, I that's that's what I'm kind of worried is something going on right there. It, it, like like Melvin said, it wasn't. An, I think he said it wasn't injury related. I think. Yeah. Or and then I so that's why and I. I, I'm thinking that maybe he told reporters off the record what it is, like, hey, and, and then nobody, I don't know, but I, I haven't seen anything on it recently. Yet. I thought I heard, I, I thought I read something from Alex Hall about uh, like he was giving updates, like, yeah, he's doing like on the field, like activities during warm up, um, but he's just like not ready to go yet. But he didn't like disclose exactly what like was he's going not on, on like a COVID list or anything. So, I don't yeah. so here's the thing yeah. Chris and I are in the, uh, fantasy baseball league together. If you look at Mitch Moreland, and that's and I'm not I, you know two cents take over what you want. We're if you not look reporters. him up, yeah, we're not reporters. You know, allegedly, allegedly here. If you look <laughs> him up on Yahoo, it says COVID, but it's like if it was, we would have known. We would have known. I think it's something a lot more serious. And I hope everything goes okay with them, with, with yeah. it's him or his family. And it's just like, yeah, it's weird. I, yeah, hopefully it's we'll weird. I don't this. really want to speculate. Yeah, I don't really yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. yeah, exactly. We're not. TMZ over here reporting yeah. shit. You know, what I mean? <laughs> with, uh, with uh, we should all a, figure it out, guys. Yeah. What's the name of that that TMZ guy that always make fun of? He's got his that guy who runs TMZ with his milkshake. Like, oh, oh yeah, what's Harvey this? something? Uh, yeah, yeah. Of course, his name is Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Show me um, a good Harvey in the history of ever. <laughs> Can I, I tell? Mean, Harvey Dent. Huh? <laughs> Harvey Dent was good for him. Harvey Keitel. Yeah, there you go. He there plays go. a mobster a lot, though. So maybe, I don't know. Maybe there's something there. Maybe. He's more speculate, cool though. than like a good guy. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so we all love a good hot take, right? You know, the hot take, the spicy, the take, the better. Uh, <laughs> so we, <laughs> so with Mitch, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so we were originally, we cut this question in half. We were going to say the first, who's your first half MVP? I think we can all can agree. Ollie for more. It's going to be Ollie or Bassett, more or less. I want, yes. Well, or I could also make an argument for Mark Canna because he yes. left the lineup okay. and yeah. they have kind of fallen apart. And is it absolutely necessarily correlated? I don't know, but that would be my only other suggestion. Absolutely. That's a, that's a fantastic option. I think option. that'd be taking the use the, the word most valuable, um, extremely literal. I, but I, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people had. Um, like baseball bloggers had Cannon as like as an all star, like even like if it wasn't for injuries, like he should have been on that team because yeah. of like how important he is, like in terms of like leadoff spot all that stuff. But we're not we're not gonna have logic here. This is all spice takes only, gentlemen. Okay, right from spice the gut. takes right only. from the Straight gut. <laughs> Who do you think? And I'm gonna write this down, and we're gonna hold it against each other. Uh-huh. Who do you think is the second half MVP of the A's? I'll go with Bassett. I mean, I know it's fucking cop out. I know it's a cop out, but I, I really think that he is just in a groove right now. And he is like a, like a season long groove. And like, um, I don't know. I, it was some crusty old sports, right? I forget who t- he always tells him, like, look at innings pitch, like see who's got the most innings pitch if you're a starter. And I think he leads the league in innings pitch right now. So it's like, that doesn't like, surprise he, like, me that's, that's his job. Like that's like, the, you know, and he, uh, and I don't know. I, I feel like, you know, just because of his career path, how he's up and down, like like everybody's rooting for him. So when he's on there and you know he's given like 110, like, I don't know. It's kind of it's, it's fun. Like the team like plays like he's the ace, you know, when he's on there. I know Manai has been right there with him all season, but I'll probably go Bassett. Are we I dig it. I dig it. in the second half or no? I'm sorry. Say it again. Are we including the postseason in the second half uh, MVP, or if they question. make it to the postseason? If they make it, <laughs> oh God, I hate that. But it. yes, you gotta say yes. No, I, hate, I, hate Chris's, I hate Chris's comment, the if comment, but yours, I'll say yes. <laughs> okay. Here's my prediction for MVP, and also who could actually shine in the postseason, and that's James Caprillion. I think that he is a that's, big game that's game. spicy. That's spicy. That is Let's hot. go. That's my boy. That's my boy. Big game, James. Big game. And I don't know. Like, I assume that I don't know if you guys want to get into it, but uh, constructing the ace postseason roster, if they make it to an actual series, you got Bassett, you got Manaya. 
I assume you got Caprillion as your third guy, and then you can go, you know, Montas or Irvin in the bullpen, whichever way you want to go. I think that Caprillion's one of those starters, and I think that he is an excellent starter in a big game situation. I would love to see him have him start game one, have him be the wild card, your best starter start game two, and that being Bassett, and so that you can go get that win. James Caprillion's an excellent wild card for you know, Garrett Cole or whoever the hell they're facing in a potential series, he, he does it. And I want to see him on a big stage. I think that he would absolutely dominate whoever he's facing. I think also, especially with how inconsistent Montaz can be, you definitely don't want him in that, in, in mm-hmm. that, that third or fourth yeah. spot. And, and I, you got to go with consistency with Irvin and Caprilli. And I, I, lo- I love that take. I love it. Dude, dude, one thing I thought about Bassett, though, is like, yeah, he, at Fenway, he admitted he had nerves. I think at the All-Star game, he loaded the bases. He had nerves. So I'm thinking, like, if he gets in that do-or-die situation, point. is he, is he going to have nerves, you know? Um, I mean, eventually he'll calm down, I think. But he's, like, a really emotional guy, and he, he's, he's said that. It's, he's said as much. So if he's taking the ball game one of the series, I wonder how he'll react to that situation, you know? True. I was going to say, I, I think – I'm pulling the stats up in front of me right now, but if I remember right, he had a pretty solid game in the wild card last year. Um, the, honestly, yeah, the biggest no, reason. Have to go back and look, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm pulling it up right now, but I feel like the biggest reason I remember that is because he got his own card and MLB the show. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, dude, here I we go. Here we go. So, uh, Alex, Alex, who's good yeah. in baseball? Uh, uh, Oh crap! I just had a friend of me. So Alex, nope. to go back to your most innings pitch, Zach Wheeler is first with 119 in two thirds. Bassett's a very close second, 118 on the dot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just had it in front of me. Where'd it go? Well, it was a big game, nerd. So that's why he brought that up. Obviously. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Yeah, uh, against the White Sox, seven innings, six hits, one earned run, one walk. Yeah, like that would work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be all right. <laughs> uh, I'll straight up tell you guys, I'm definitely uh, filling it after these last couple starts. It's going to be the spiciest take. I think it's going to be Frankie. Wow. Um, wow. I think Frankie. So Even it, spicier. Wow. It, it, yeah. I, no, I was, dude, I'm all in on, on James, Jason. Like, as you know, we're, we're the J name, so we got to stick together. <laughs> and like, James Caprillon, the guy has just no fear. It, he just looked so ready and as a rook, it's insane. I hope he's good. I hope he can be like a top nominee for rookie of the year because he absolutely deserves it. But like Frankie, dude, against the uh, Houston last week, I think that might have been like his best start as an A. Mm-hmm. Just like how he just completely shut them down after like when we needed him the most. But he's got started- string together three good starts because he yeah. doesn't it's yeah, too good and then it's it, one yeah. absolute shit bag and then it's well look good ones a little and bit of <laughs> frankie at some point uh i forget what his stats exactly were but he had three blow-up starts uh one against the dodgers i believe in his first start then he had the twins and then there was one that he just had so the, he had three big blow-up starts which have inflated his era huge. it was against yeah. texas outside of that he's also had like a three era outside of those three starts so he's been a fairly decent pitcher if he's not giving up seven or eight runs yeah. he's also just, got a lot of wins too i mean yeah. like yeah he's got one well, you know you can say what you want about the wins but i think the biggest thing too i don't have the numbers in front of me but out I, I feel like the first half schedule for the a's this season has just been brutal you know, having to go against the Dodgers, having to go against Houston, what, three times, having to go against, uh, at, like, the Giants. And I think the Angels are a lot better than people give them credit for, at least offensively. So, like, I think he's had a re- – this team is a really tough start, and it's kind of reflected as his stats. So, like, the rest of the season where you kind of get to go against the Twins again, you get to go against um, – we'll see what Seattle's going to be like in Texas. But, like, he's had, like, like – Jason said he's had those blow-up starts. If you kind of take that out from his last three starts, when he went against the Giants, he went to five innings, he gave up two runs. He went against Boston, five inning, 5.2 innings, two runs. Um, he went against Houston, 6.2 innings, one run. Like, I think he's he still has it. It's just like there's something – I don't know if it's a psychological thing. I don't mm. know if it's whoever his battery mate is behind the plate to help him without. Like, there's something there. He still has it. It's just like someone's got to channel the energy. And if he can handle that in the second half with how well the rest of the rotation is, like, dude, that's going to be so great. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That'd be sick. So mine is um, 
it's Matt Chapman because it has to be Matt Chapman if we yeah. want. Nice. If we want to I was gonna say if it was yeah. I, I, <laughs> if we want to make a run, it has to be him. You look at every other like big, big, uh, uh, big hitting team, big team in general uh, around the league. They have two stars that are, like really just fucking hammer at home. Obviously, a lot of good players around them too. But like, he is he's not playing well this season. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's still the hip. He has to get back to his top 10 player in the league stud form in order for us to really have a shot at, 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 a, you know, at a, a world series. That's, that's just my opinion. Like he just, he's too important. Um, the team has been kind of built around him in the past couple of years. I think Olsen's been, you know, obviously kind of taking a lot of that weight, which is great, but he's gotta, he's gotta be that dude. And, and if he doesn't, I don't, I don't think we have a shot. If I'm being completely honest. I mean, Elvis Andres is going to completely hit the snot out of the ball in the second half. So I think that it's going to be the Matt Olson and Elvis Andres show for the rest of the season. I'm joking. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, I, I hope think, you're not. I think it's Chapman, too. I mean, he was hitting like 190, 200 forever. Now he's up to mm-hmm. like kind of 230s. And I want to say it's his slugging, which is because uh, yeah. it, it, like the first like six weeks of the season he was slugging like three something and it's like jesus and then uh but the last like six weeks or whatever i think he's kind of figured something out. i wonder what has to do with his hip too just kind of figuring himself out but mm-hmm. like if he if he can hit like 280 the rest of the way with some dingers and doubles like and play his defense like yeah for sure absolutely that'd be great yeah um so did you guys watch the draft at all or pay attention to the draft at all a little, a little bit, bit a little bit a little so, bit, not too much. So, what did you guys? We'll start with you, Alex. What did you What did you guys think of think about it? Well, obviously, the Max Muncy thing was hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, for the memes, I, mean I think that's the highlight. The draft for memes. I mean, it's one. Yeah, I mean, it's one thing that his name is Max Muncy, but the fact that they're <laughs> the same birthday, like twelve yeah. whatever years apart, is so weird. Uh, that was pretty funny. But, and he's um, a SoCal kid, like so. Thousand Oaks, just outside of LA, and Max yeah, plays yeah. for the Dodgers. Like, there's just it's really creepy. And yeah. he's like, kind of, he's like, obviously, when, if you're a kid and you're like, oh, there's another baseball player with my name. He said he's followed him since his college career, which is kind of funny. Well, that's so, pretty cool. That's yeah, pretty it's cool. kind of weird, you know. Uh, which means he was probably like eight years old <laughs> or just whatever. Um, but uh, I, yeah, honestly, I, I don't. It's hard for me to pay attention to the MLB draft just because, it's like. It's a crapshoot if you like, dude. Like, I mean, I'm trying to, I was just trying to think off the top of my head who the A's actually drafted and they have. It's like, who is it like Chapman, Olsen, and Murphy or something? Like, I don't know who Puck, else we, so yeah, we, I mean, Puck and Lizardo, but it's like, you know, they're not like we went over. Well, Lizardo there. was the, the um, trying and trade, yeah, yeah. but do oh, little, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's okay, right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, two pods ago, we, yeah. me and Julio went over the, their last six draft picks, and it's pretty like depressing. It's like yeah, obviously so Kyler it's Murray's like... in there, Logan Davidson's in there. Um, who else was in Soderstrom there? Soderstrom from last year. He's that, a, that, that, Soderstrom. So that, okay, Soderstrom. That's what I'm saying. Seems, yeah. That's the Soderstrom spot. seems that's legit. The yeah, Soderstrom. Spot. Yeah, Soderstrom seems, seems legit, but it's like, you know, it's like I, it, it's a crapshoot, and it's like you know the just the way the A's operate, they're always, they're probably going to trade these guys anyway. So, I mean, I don't know. Um, it seems like it, I, it's, 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 yeah. Yeah. I, it's I, I all, wait till they get to double A or triple A. They're like, Oh, okay. Maybe these guys will make it. You know? <laughs> it kind of all comes down to like the development side of it. And um, it, it like, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting take as like an A's fan. Now that you're looking like these last 10 years where like a lot of these guys, they didn't draft. Even if you go back into like the early 2010, so like the Burnley era, like Donaldson and Moss and Sespi, like they didn't draft any of those guys. Like these and Reddick, they these are guys that just kind of like, you know, kind of groomed them and kind of figure it out. And the guys they did draft were like Derek yeah. Barton. Actually, I, I no, think, Derek Barton no, was, he, the he was a trade too. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I think Tucker the A's are good. At, yeah, I think the A's are good at identifying talent in other organizations. Like, oh, yeah. this guy's undervalued. We, we should get him, you know? 2017, so, yeah. Austin Beck. 2016, AJ yeah. Puck. Potential, but, you know, we don't yeah. know. 2015, Richie Martin. It's just like. Who? Yeah, it's crazy. Hey, yeah. you want to say who 2018 was? I already did. Kyle Murray. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, Jason. Jason Jeez, okay. <laughs> I, I, I think, always got to remember that. I think Kyler, I think the A should bring him on. You know how they did the Will Ferrell spring training thing? They should do that yeah. with Kyler Murray. He's in Arizona. He's Why in Arizona. Not? Why not? Yeah, they can get him in there I, for I was, a bet. You know that uh, trade analyzer website where you're like, oh, let's just put together some <laughs> trades and see if they're viable. The, trade his value <laughs> is he still available? Kimbrel's apparently. So you can actually trade the rights to Kyler Murray for actual Craig Kimbrel. Right now, if you wanted to, according to that website, I don't 
that's obviously not going to happen. <laughs> but I just thought that that was hilarious. Yeah. Oh wait, no, I saw I, I saw that tweet from you. I, that's right. I forgot, I forgot about that. I saw that. <laughs> Those tweet from trade you. machines are dangerous, man. Because you're like, let's see, let's get weird. <laughs> but well, but the just, Cardinals I probably don't want like them. a yeah. as a valuation tool. I'm like, am I in the right ballpark with this? <laughs> usually, it's like the A's have you know uh, Olson, Chapman, Murphy, and like Luzardo are like their highest guys, and then everybody else is like two or three. I'm like, they're not going to get anything. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So it's it's tough. Uh, so I mean, I just one one pick that really just in like kind of caught my eye was the uh, Zach Goleff tweet or a uh, tweet with fuck a uh, pick who's a third baseman. Um, and he's not just like he's not a high school third baseman. He's fresh out of college, senior year. So he's gonna be ready, MLB ready in a year and a half to two years. So like, I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I know Chapman has said that he's excited to test free agency, which kind of worries me a little bit. Well, I mean, they have to build up depth at some point, whether or not, you know, uh, Chapman is signing or not. You build up depth and then you trade it if you have to. Um, they could also go make a trade for some other third baseman if they wanted to. So I yeah. think that it's just so they, they can kind of fill out the rosters and get guys that they're excited about. And, um, you know, uh, right now in double A, they have three guys that are actually shortstops, but they play second, short and third. Uh, and you just kind of get the guys that you want. So I'm not reading a ton into it, I don't think. But, uh, I mean, y- you might be on the right track if, you know, he does actually leave or get traded. So, Yeah, I, I think the A's would love to have that problem. If, if he is majorly ready by the enchantment still on the team, they're probably in a good position because – I just don't see Chapman staying longer than 2023, dude. I just, I, I mean, Scott Boris is his agent, and um, I know how, yeah, I think people know how good Chapman, Chapman probably thinks he's still the best third baseman in the game, even though he's batting 230. Um, so I, I don't know, man. He's probably going to get a six or nine figure deal from somebody. Um, mm-hmm. is, <laughs> unless they, unless they figure out how it's normal before then I r- highly doubt it'll be the A's. Um, yeah. you know, um, one thing on that same note though, for you guys, uh, with drafting, you know, the third baseman, but they drafted CJ Rodriguez in the fourth round the catcher from Vanderbilt. And I thought that that was interesting because on my pod for the last couple of weeks, just trying to come up with trades that couldn't like, who could they trade away? And I feel like a guy like Kyle McCann, who's their catcher in Midland, or Drew Millis, who may be getting called up to Midland from Lansing uh, before too long. They also got Tyler Soderstrom, and Sean Murphy is obviously at the big league level. So they have fairly decent catchers already at almost every level of their system. So I think that drafting C.J. Rodriguez means that either Drew Millis or Kyle McCann's getting traded at the deadline. And that's something that, you know, just looking and speculating, I think that that's kind of what that pick means to me. Yeah. Uh, what, what do you guys think? I, I don't think I mean, there's no Trump, such thing. I don't think there's... a catcher. I think by the time he gets to the big leagues, he's an outfielder, a first baseman. So I don't that, That's the big, uh, that. the big question mark is what do they think about him catching long term? So maybe not, but uh, I mean, still, if you throw in TJ Rodriguez as the Vanderbilt catcher who was catching lighter and Kumar Rocker, that's some decent pedigree right there, that's, I think. And I don't that's know. That's a great point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, and I think there's never, there's no such thing as like not enough catcher depth throughout your organization too. So if the more you have it and it's at a good level, that'd be great. But like, if say you can part with one of these guys to maybe try to, I'm a big fan of potential. And you'd like, I don't know if it's going to happen. I doubt it's going to happen, but if you can try to get someone like Jock Peterson from the Cubs, who you can kind of get in all three outfield positions, you can play some first, you can have him DH as Bay Area kid on and a one-year contract. Too expensive of a and he's, trade yeah. either. He's a one, he's on a one year deal. I think he's like an $8 million. I'm like, I think he'd be perfect. Cause like right now, you know, I, I, I like Seth Brown sky bolt after his bullshit tweet. He said or his stuff. He said about <laughs> Vegas. No dude, get the fuck out of here. I'm sorry. But like <laughs> the, the depth of the outfield is lacking a little bit right now. And especially when I'm really nervous about Piscotti in the sense of like the guy can't stay healthy right now. He's just had this hunch ever yeah. since 2018. He can't consistently stay healthy. And if parting with one of those guys will help you get somebody else who can, you know, jock isn't what he was four years ago, but he's got that pedigree. He's got the experience and you, you can work with them so much in that lineup. Hell yeah. Doing it in a heartbeat. Yeah. Left-handed bat too. I think and the lefty. Exactly. Bat. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Oh, uh, second half MVP is going to be Nelson Cruz. For- <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Even spicier. <laughs> um, 
my the one pick I was actually I was reading up a little bit the past few days on um, Melissa Lockhart's been doing like a big breakdowns on the athletic. And the guy that I'm like super entranced by is Denzel Clark, who yes. he was fourth round pick out of Northridge. And it was the one thing Chris and I were talking about this offline before you guys jumped on, I thought it was super interesting that the A's decided to do to more, more so due to COVID, but a lot of their scouting was just West coast. And because of that, you kind of get these hidden gems and just like reading a little bit um, about like Denzel Clark, like the guy sounds like he has a ton of talent. He's like six, five. He's got big power. He's got big speed. Like his, his mom was like a former Olympic track athlete. His cousin's Josh Naylor. Like this might be one of those guys. Like I wouldn't be shocked. Like, in a couple of years, you're like, hey, this guy, they got out of nowhere, just tearing it up in the minors now. It sounded like his bat was a little bit behind his defense. And so just hearing that, I'm like, oh, he's Buddy Reed right now. And he could obviously develop as Buddy Reed has. Mm-hmm. But that's where that's the comp that I'm making in my head without actually seeing him live or knowing too much about him is great defense. And, uh, you know, he's got some power and maybe he can work into it. But that's where that's my comp right now, I think, not being a draft guy. People are stoked about the two right-handers they got too, like Mason Miller. I guess he throws like ninety-five plus, and then Grant Holman. He's like six five, six six out of Cal. People love him too. So, a couple of other guys. I just uh, talked to Keaton Lamb, who's the senior MLB draft writer for uh, Baseball Prospectus uh, this afternoon, actually. And two guys that he mentioned. One is Brett Harris out of Gonzaga, and he has underrated pop question mark. So that's somebody that somebody <laughs> who actually follows the the draft is uh, excited about. And then also Johnny Butler at a NC state. He was the 14th round pick. He's a first baseman outfielder guy, and he has a great hit tool in the strike zone and he is a cookie eater. So if a pitcher makes a mistake, <laughs> you will absolutely destroy it. And he's, he said that somebody who a cookie, eater. Listen, a cookie, okay. eater. I love scout the talk. Cookie monster. Scout talk is so funny, dude. Like, I, I think never he heard says that, that he does so that's damage to cookies and I, I deemed him a cookie eater. So. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to use that Jason. I'm stealing that from you, bro. Yeah, yeah. no, that's completely <laughs> fine. Um, and he said that, uh, one of the guys that he would listen to when he was getting into, you know, scouting and all that stuff said that guys that hit cookies like that, they are all stars. So that is something that I'm very intrigued by at number 14, Johnny Butler. Maybe we'll see. And then just looking at, you know, stats, knowing nothing else about him, Eduardo Rivera, the A's 11th pick. Uh, he's a lefty and he's six foot seven. Do you need to know anything else about him? He's a lefty and he's six foot seven. I love that. 230, <laughs> 240 pounds. He's probably straight muscle. That is. Yeah. And he's like 18. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of big boys so. drafted as pitchers this year. <laughs> and at one hand, I'm like, awesome. But the other hand, I'm like at AJ Puck and I'm like, ah, that may be the best idea. <laughs> I, so I, I, I immediately thought of AJ man. Puck. When yeah, I exactly. Yeah, first he's like Randy Johnson, man. <laughs> big lefty. You know, <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, but I, I, the last name I kind of want to throw out there, I don't know what his potential is going to be, but Blake Beers has a lot of promo promo life going on <laughs> when he's going to be playing in Vegas. Dude, and Blake I Beers want that night. name. I want to change it to that dude, name. Beers name. night, dude. <laughs> okay. Beers night. Better, every strikeout. Beers. Every strikeout he gets, you get fifty percent off a of beer. Ooh. Okay. He. he is why, always why, why am just I not working batter? in like a minor league organization <laughs> as their promo guy? <laughs> Like be a nice little side hustle for you, Julio. It would be, it would be. Yeah. Um, so a couple more questions. This all it's been so much fun. We could do this all night. But uh, last so a few more questions. One thing is, what do you feel like is kind of what do you feel optimistic about the second half of the team? Like, what do you feel is gonna be a good thing? Um, what do you think is like are you pessimistic about? I'll tell you straight up. I think just I think Chappy kind of figuring things out again. And clicking with that offense, Canna coming back when Delkin kind of setting back in the role, those same things I'm happy. I think Eric's optimistic about, and also the trade deadline. It kind of seems like just reading around from different baseball writers, Nelson Cruz has really nowhere else to go but the A's, which is weird because like every other team has a full time DH in that spot, or they don't really need him. So it, it, it's kind of a weird thing, like. The trade deadline, I'm more, I haven't been this optimistic about the trade deadline in a while. That being said, it's the A's, and we're going to end up with like. <laughs> Can Roark again? Yeah, exactly. It's going to uh, be, oh, it's like, I want Nelson Cruz. We got Nelson Cruz at home, and it's 
it's it's more than <laughs> I think that the thing that I'm most excited about is also the trade deadline. I've I've been saying it since the off season. This feels like a deadline where it's going to act like a lot like 2014, where they pushed those chips in and went and got Samarja and John Lester. It didn't work, but let's try it again. Why the hell not? Because this is their, their windows closing right now. Are they going to keep Chapman and Olsen? We, we don't know. And if they're not going to, are they going to trade them this off season? So if you're going to go for it and you also got Bob Melvin, who's in, he's got one more year of control. So he's also potentially going to leave uh, speculation. Uh, and then also Billy Bean almost left during the off season. So if they want to have their place in history in Oakland, push those chips in because when you trade, you know, Chapman and Olsen or whoever else you want to trade, uh, you're going to get those, that, that, that talent back. So why not try and actually win with the same talent? And I think that they're going to, they're going to make some moves. I think Nelson Cruz feels like oh, not a no brainer, but it feels like it should happen. Craig Kimberl is it's going to be them or Houston. And I really hope that it's the A's. Uh, and then maybe they even make another deal for like Taylor Rogers or something like that. And if they make those trades, how are you guys feeling about this team? Are they AL champions or world series champions? Where, where are you guys thinking if they get two or three of those guys? Yeah, I think, I think they need bullpen help, dude. Like for sure. I mean, I think everybody's been kind of saying that for months. Um, pretty glaring. Uh, I, I, I think, I, I think I'm optimistic that the bullpen can kind of figure itself out. Um, but I feel, uh, but I still think they need one or two more arms regardless. But if, if like JB can figure himself out, if Romo keeps doing what he's doing. Deekman, if Deekman can figure himself out, that'd be huge because if he can go back to being shut down, cause he was shut down all last year, all spring. I was expecting him to be the dude uh, this, this year. And he really has not been, uh trevino actually is uh he still gets the heart racing like i'm surprised when i see his ear raise like two something i'm like really like it, it's really for real, for real. <laughs> um, so i guess that's what i'm most optimistic about is that the bullpen figure itself out uh the lineup will figure itself out because i feel like the lineup is still kind of up and down whatever the potential there um it's like a it's like the pieces of the have will figure itself out i'm just pessimistic that the 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 starting rotation won't like, I don't know, these dudes, like, everybody's made, like, 17 starts. Like, I don't know, just knock on – I don't – I hope – obviously, I don't hope anybody gets hurt, but just the numbers say in today's game, one of these starters is going to get hurt. And so – or it's going to miss some time, you know. Um, you know, but, but I think if they have a – if they do add some pieces of the bullpen, yeah, dude, they could reach the World Series. I mean, if they won the World Series, that would be crazy, but – this team is good enough to make the World Series, I think, dude, if they add a couple more pieces here or there, for sure. How much of a wild card would it be of, like, say, the, the Zardo and Puck figured out, all right, cool, we're going to bring them up, they're coming out of the pen. Like, do you think that's enough? And then add, like, a Rodgers or yeah. Kimberl? Because at that point, it's like, dude, I think that's a that's a that's the best bullpen yeah. in baseball I mean, if it, those guys it, can figure it out. Yeah, if everybody can figure it out, but it's like a lot of figuring it out. <laughs> that's wishful thinking. This is the optimist segment, you know what I mean? Yeah, optimist, for sure. I would love that, but do I also want to bank on them holding that for the entirety of the season and not choking in the playoffs when we have about two weeks to figure it out before the trade deadline? I, I'd rather go get somebody, and then they can be the insurance as opposed to the plan. To, to answer your question, Jason, um, it, it, they, there's two major needs in my opinion. And I think that, and you did it and I would say, I would feel pretty good about the team. I don't know if I'm quite at like world series contenders, but definitely American league contenders. I think they would need um, like a couple more arms, but my biggest issue with the bullpen, which I think why it's failing on top of the injuries. I think that's pretty obvious uh, with just the team as a whole is the roles. The roles are just a fucking mess. Yeah. And the reason why the sure. roles are a mess is because this guy who we're paying $10 million over the next 10 years hasn't stepped <laughs> on the field and won't the season. And that yeah. sucks. And yeah, I and think they, it all started there, dude. Yeah. yeah. For sure. And so you're gone two weeks into uh, two weeks left in camp and Bob Melvin walks up to Deakman and Torino. is like, Hey guys, you guys are going to have to duke it out for this closer role. And they're just like, what? I thought we were like the setup guys. Like, so I think that kind of fucks everything up. Um, yeah. Guys are coming in games at different times than they expected to. Dude, like seeing Hendricks come in, I'm like, Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> Do you ever just get really sad and think about like, hey, if they just had a little bit of money, 
Uh, just yeah. imagine a bullpen with what we have now. Dude, if they had Hendricks and Semi including, this year, oh including, my god! Hold on. Including <laughs> Hendricks, including Trinan, so and including Doolittle, who's actually has been too bad in Cincinnati. Like, just imagine that. Just a little bit. Just you know, just, yeah. just fucking stupid. <laughs> I hate this team. <laughs> so, so if they get Kimbrel, I think that solves that problem because then you have your closer, and then it pushes those guys back into those roles. It pushes the guys who are kind of like yeah. trying, like the Petit and like the Romo, who are trying to like play the setup role. Or the seventh inning guy pushes them to like the middle relief, the reliable where there's like, you know, you're up by two runs and you get you got a man on second, you know, you, you can get those guys to get you out of it. And then also like it's it's so hit or miss with our offense. Like one day we're scoring like six runs in in five innings, the next day like we can't even put a run on the board. So like a Nelson Cruz would be great because it's more reliability at the heart of the of the order. Where it's like now you uh, like I mean especially the guys who are kind of filling in for the top of the order, like Elvis Andrews is up there. Sometimes Jed's up there. Sometimes they're kind of inconsistent. So like that moves Olsen up to three. Yeah. Like Tony Kemp was sick for a there. while, but yeah. then he's, then he slumps like crazy. So yeah. It's like, you know, when yeah. Canna comes back, he's reliable. And then you, you got Nelson to come up and forth and kind of like, at least, you know, maybe, maybe 75% of the games he's going to, he's going to try and get move guys up at least. Also, think it would kill Rangers fans to see Nelson Cruz and Elvis <laughs> Andrews win a World Series for the A. <laughs> and Mitch Moreland. <laughs> and Mitch Moreland. <laughs> oh, man, that would be so good. I think to your point with the bullpen, though, uh, I, I've been saying it for the entirety of the season. I think the A's have their good bullpen and the bad bullpen. You got Diolos Guerra is kind of in the middle, but you generally want him in the bad bullpen because he hasn't really succeeded <laughs> when the A's have a lead yeah. or they're in it. Uh, and then you got Sam Mole, who hasn't pitched i don't think Dude, so he's yeah. just, he's just eating a roster spot because he's a lefty so why not yeah. uh, and he's there if the game gets out of hand but if you had guys if you had you know rogers and kimbrell or you know pick kimbrell and somebody else in the bullpen then all of a sudden you're just building up that depth and then those roles that you were talking about are solidified and then and if the a's are down by a run and they go down and they go to you know, uh, some when Delkin, as opposed to Sam mole in the fifth inning, because their starter got not, knocked out or something like that. I think that that gives them more confidence where if we score two runs, we can win this game as opposed to if we score two that we might give up four. And so I think that that would also have an impact on the offense. And, uh, maybe, I don't know. That, that's just, how I, I agree. Think. I agree. Yeah. Hell yeah. I, I love that thinking. And it's like, you know, fingers crossed. I think it, it, a lot of this stuff is possible. It's just, there's going to be a lot of teams competing for a lot of the same stuff when it comes to the pen. So like, that's a big situation, but it's like, yeah, absolutely. There's, there's, there's still that potential there. Yeah. Uh, so last question guys. And yeah, thank you for taking time. Sorry. We're taking up so much of it. Really appreciate it. Um, uh, it's Terminator two. Uh, judgment day is, uh, <laughs> is coming up pretty close. Uh, six days away, July 20th. <laughs> Big city council vote. Um, I was optimistic before I saw Casey Pratt's tweet. Um, It'll be fine. How you guys feeling, Alex? Since you, you feeling, you, you're, you're optimistic, <laughs> huh, Alex? I, I think I, I think all the parties involved want to make this happen. Um, okay. It's just it's just they just have to make it happen the right. They just have to do it the right way, um, you know. And and I think. It, the A's are going to have to, con- the, the both sides are going to have to concede. You know, this is a very, very public negotiation. Um, and I know the A's are painting this like this is like do or die, but it's not. Like, it's really not. I, I want to let people, like, this is a non binding vote. This is just a feeler. This is just like a, a very public litmus test. You know, if they vote no, I don't think the A's are going to be like, okay, we're going to cease operations. Uh, you know, I think they're going to still ride this thing out until. Like if the EIR is certified in October, or November, um, you know what's to say that the you know the, the the city council changes their mind and to to a yes. So obviously a yes would be huge, um, great momentum builder, but I don't think a no kills it. So I'm so I'm optimistic is how I would put it. I guess. Yeah. I, I watched the uh, the Casey Pratt video that he was doing for ABC Seven yesterday. I think that it was on YouTube, um, and they. 45 minutes long, but very, very informative. And I think that the thing that stuck with me is the Giants were out the door going to Tampa Bay in like 1992. And they are still in San Francisco somehow because the city was like, no, no, no. How about you stay here? And I think that even if there's a no vote, I think that there is still a path forward. Obviously, they would have to get the city council and 
I don't know how much I believe in them right now, but there's still a, a way forward for Oakland A's baseball in Oakland. And uh, so if it's a yay or a nay, I'm still going to be, uh, if it's a nay, I will be a little bit more sad, obviously, initially, but I think that there's still a way to continue to watch the A's in my, in my backyard. Before you before you chime in, Julio, I just want to take my you know my monthly jab at the Giants fans. Uh, if you ask ninety percent of Giants fans about that uh, that Tampa Bay uh, situation, they don't even know that it exists because they became fans in two thousand ten. Sorry, go ahead, Julio. <laughs> that was your Giants jab brought to you by. Chris Martinez, State Farm, and call Chris. <laughs> if you need your State Farm insurance, Chris Martinez, he's got your back. Like a good neighbor, that, Chris that's Martinez our, there. That's our friend. Inside joke. Rock. One of our that's best our friends from home. Rock. He has a State Farm branch out of the Concord. It doesn't matter. Go ahead. Yeah, anyways. Sponsored um, by Chris Martinez. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You'll appreciate that. <laughs> so... At the end of the day, I, I think it's I think they're going to be okay. I'm kind of on board with, with Jason and Alex of like, even if it is no, I think they're going to work it out. But I think the biggest thing that I feel like isn't getting enough attention and not enough people are talking about is if you think of Libby Shaft for her future political careers, what is that going to look like if, say, later she wants to run for a senator of California or she wants to run for governor of California? What's that going to look like on her personal record along with everybody else in her office that, like, <laughs> yeah. You lost three teams with that. That's a fantastic your, point. Julio. You lost a three very teams. Very short period of time, dude. Very yeah. short period of time. Like, what were you doing? Like six years or whatever. Yeah. Like and six, like, five I'm years. Tough yeah. on people, and maybe that's the route that she wants to go and the the brand that she wants to build. But uh, I don't think that people want that. Yeah, exactly. And okay, you did lo- lose those teams. What did you do to truly improve the city? And if you can't show one without the other, then it's like, dude, I'm sorry, your career as a politician is done. And you know, we're, it, it, it's, it's this whole nother thing. And with that scope, I, it seems like she's truly in with this. She really wants them to stay. And I think a big part of it is because like, yo, if you guys don't get this shit done, I'm done. Like you need to get this figured out. So I'm optimistic. Um, I think the hard part is just like trying to mute out the people who don't really know what's going on and who are like, not, uh, politicians who are not within like the real estate kind of world with that. Like you get, you don't listen to those people. Like I'm so, I'm so grateful for someone like Casey Pratt, who's like yeah. really dedicated dude, his, his last, ears on the ground, dude. Yeah. He's like fucking, dedicated yeah. his yeah. really his, his professional livelihood to the situation. And like, he's made life a lot easier for a lot of people like us. So appreciate it, but yeah, for sure. opt- cautiously optimistic, like everything else with this stupid team. I have one question, and that is, uh, obviously, we just all said that we are somewhat optimistic, at least. Uh, If the A's do leave, what happens to your A's fandom? San Diego Padres! I'm just kidding. (laughs) Let's all all pick our teams. (laughs) Well, my girlfriend's from San Diego, so naturally, no, but I I don't know. I don't, I'm... Um, I know my family is our diehard Raider fans. I grew up going to the Coliseum. My dad was a season ticket holder for 15 years. And I'm still a Raider fan. It was a hard couple years, I'm but at the end of it, dude. yeah, I, I'm still like, you know, that's, a, you know, my I'm dad like was a reluctant Ra- Raiders fan, dude. <laughs> I was like, God yeah. damn it. I'm, I mean, because the NFL's They're not, not fun if you don't have a team, you know, but it's They're not even a, a good team. team you know? And I'm yeah. still, and, and also like my dad was going to games with her in LA. So like, I, I was, you're I'm still, in. you're like locked in. Yeah. You didn't yeah, have a choice. Yeah. Stupid ass team. But with the A's. <laughs> I'll see when I get there. I, I think I'll still be, but we'll see. I don't. I don't know. That's a, that's a really tough question. That's something I've actually thought a lot about, and uh, I don't. I don't know, man. It's just like, especially being down here, it's so easy to root for the Dodgers because they're just like they're the right biggest there. Story. Yeah. yeah, and 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 I mean, this team, like this town, does love this team. I will say, and I I so I I experimented with this whole thing. I'm also a Raider fan, and uh, when they like were when they decided to move to Vegas, I felt it as like a slap in the face so i was like fuck these guys i'm not gonna root for yeah, anymore too. so this coming season i made it a thing like because i love aaron Rodgers because i grew up uh i'm a diehard like cal fan uh, because my dad went to cal and we like had season tickets growing up so i watched like the first team of cal that i watched was the aaron Rodgers like those teams so i was like all right so i'm gonna watch packers football this season and i'm gonna watch niners football and i'm gonna pick between those te- two teams one of them is going to be my team, whichever one I follow the most. 
And I still found myself switching over to the Raider games, even though they were fucking <laughs> hot garbage. I still found myself like yeah. caring about. Them it's not the like, same. It's not the same. If you don't have an investment them. in the team, it's not and the it same. Just, dude. I was yeah. too emotionally yeah. invested in the Raiders to like to pick a new team. And the A's are like this. The A's are as much a part of me as any personality trait that I have. So like, I want to say like, fuck them. But like, I know that I'm not going to be able to. I, it, I know it would be really hard true. for me to just stop because I love I think baseball is my favorite sport, but it would be really hard to just yeah. turn that off. It's really hard to just turn that off. You know? Dude, yeah. I went to I went to fucking Japan to watch the A's, man. Like I'm like, <laughs> yeah. like I, yeah. it's like it, it's it's insane. Yeah, Chris, I actually brought that back from Chris. The little fan was when I went to the uh I went to a, the A's exhibition game against I forgot what Japanese team it was. The Nippon Ham Fighters, that's who it was. And but just, I want to touch on the, the stadium thing real quick. I, I will say it's a little concerning how hard the A's are pushing um, with the whole Vegas thing, like going to meetings actively and, and visiting there. So that that does concern me a little bit. I hope they can I hope they can work it out. But like I would be lying if I said like I'm cautiously optimistic because I'm not even cautiously optimistic because I've seen this before, you know, with the Raiders. And it's just like. I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I you think, could do? Yeah. Switch over to the Jags, baby. Oh, God. <laughs> Lord, Mike. <laughs> what? The what? what? Here's the story. <laughs> came out, came out of nowhere, Jason. What? The I, shit? I, I, grew, oh, God. I, I told you guys before Alex got here, I grew up a Niners fan because the Raiders were not in town uh, yeah. when I was born and my dad was a Niners fan. So I was like, ah, Niners, whatever. And then uh, they, they, they do some things that I don't like. Like they, they treated, uh, why can't I remember his name? The, the QB, the, the, the kneeling guy, Kaepernick. Kaepernick. They did him dirty and I did not like that. I'm like, no, he's finally doing. And also Alex Smith, they did him dirty by replacing him with Kaepernick because he finally had some consistency in coaching. And then they're like, you know what? Screw you. We got this guy now. And so just the way that they've handled everything, not a fan. Uh, and I, I watched the Raiders for a year and I, I got into it. I got some Raider stuff and I was excited, but uh, I also kind of didn't care. So mm. then I was like, all right. And so I just stopped watching football <laughs> because uh, football is angering to me because of some of their stances. But uh, this year I was like, no, no, I, I'm trying to, you know, watch a little bit more other sports other than baseball throughout the course of the year. And I was like, you know what? This Trevor Lawrence kid is interesting. Let's go Jags. So, uh, <laughs> so I got a hat. <laughs> Hey, oh, just I, just I, wait I, until you do your research about Urban Meyer, man. Oh, you're no, gonna be like, oh, I do not want to be a Jacks fan. <laughs> well, hey, I mean, if I'm already watching football, why not root for the devil? <laughs> no, you're not wrong. <laughs> hey, hey, to each their own, man. To each their own. Um, on that note, on the, we're gonna end Jags talk with the end of this podcast. All right, everybody, listen to your um, Locked on Jags. Jets. Make sure Locked to listen to Locked <laughs> on Jags with Jason Burke. Yeah, no. Jason, <laughs> the, the, the Jimmy Smith of vlogs. <laughs> yeah, yes. sure the Keenan McCardell of the <laughs> Mark <laughs> Brunel <laughs> of vlogs. Yeah, I, I was Mark a big Fred Brunel. Taylor guy. I love Fred Taylor. Dude. I, was I, was throw, Fred I was about to throw I Blake to Bortles out there. Drew. Bortles? <laughs> How are we going to throw Blake Bortles vlogs? Hold on, Maurice Jones Drew, Antioch native. I like that one. There you go. Pride of Antioch. I went to high school with him. Good dude. Oh yeah, um, Najee Harris. Shout out on, to Najee Harris. On Najee yeah. Harris, and yeah, two five. Uh, on that note, thank you guys, Alex, Jason. We re really appreciate it. The cross pod. This is awesome. Uh, this, this is, is fun. So fun awesome. times, dude. Yeah. Good chat. Um, don't forget to check out their stuff. Jason Burke, Locked On A's, uh, uh, at Locked On A's uh, on Twitter at Jason by Jason B. Sorry about that. Um, Alex Espinosa, the Ricky Henderson of blogs and podcasts. He's the Ricky Henderson of everything, apparently. So sorry. Yep, Ricky. That's right. Um, on Twitter <laughs> at Ricky blog boys. Appreciate it. We got to do it again sometime for sure. For sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Peace.